Hello everyone, welcome to the Well of Curiosity and to Natural Disasters 101. Last time we looked skyward to investigate tropical cyclones. This time we dive into the water to take a look at our next type of natural disaster, tsunamis. A tsunami is a powerful pulse of energy that can travel great distances on the surface of oceans and occasionally lakes, in the form of high-speed waves. They are hardly noticeable in open waters, but increase dramatically in size when they approach the shoreline. We get the word tsunami from Japanese, where it means harbour wave. A tsunami can occur in any ocean around the world, but are more likely to occur near active tectonic plate boundaries, particularly at convergent boundaries where the plates are moving towards each other. Most happen in the Pacific Ocean, in the ever notorious Ring of Fire. A tsunami can be unleashed by a variety of different events. Underwater volcanic eruptions, submarine landslides and large meteorite impacts can all trigger tsunamis, but they are most often caused by earthquakes on the ocean floor. These earthquakes cause ruptures under a section of seafloor, which can lead to huge slabs being pushed suddenly upwards, displacing the water that lies above and generating tsunami waves. A tsunami can travel at immense speeds of up to 800 kilometers an hour or 500 miles an hour, much faster than wind-generated waves. In the open ocean, the wave is very small, appearing less than one meter in height. However, as it approaches the shore, the wave slows down considerably, but its height increases up to, and occasionally over, 30 meters as the wave is compressed and its energy directed upwards. This is where the trouble begins. The initial approach of a tsunami is often signalled by the receding of water at the shore. This is caused by a tsunami's trough, the low point beneath the wave's crest, which often reaches the shore first. When it does, it produces a vacuum effect that sucks coastal water seaward and exposes harbour and sea floors. After this, a massive wall of water arrives. Rather than breaking, it usually surges inland powerfully. With a large tsunami, the surge of water can lift and smash cars, boats, houses and people. After around 20 minutes, the water pulls back strongly, drawing vast amounts of debris and even people out to sea. To make things even more serious, this process can repeat itself several times over the course of an hour or so as successive waves arrive at the shoreline. In addition to loss of life and mass injuries, other potential impacts of a tsunami include damage to homes, businesses, ports, harbours, cultural resources, utilities and critical infrastructure, causing a lack of access to basic services such as power and water. Communications, transportation and health services may also be disrupted, hindering rescue and recovery. Tsunamis can cause hazardous material to be released into the environment, contaminating water supplies and threatening the health of both people and the surrounding ecosystem. Tsunamis truly hold the power to make devastating, long-lasting impacts to parts of our planet. We are well aware of how dangerous tsunamis can be. As such, complex warning systems have been established to look for their distinctive signs. These systems include networks of stations to detect underwater earthquakes, seafloor sensors and surface buoys in the open ocean to detect pressure changes caused by passing tsunami waves, and the use of satellites to quickly send alerts and warnings to surrounding areas that may be affected. The US made DART Deep Ocean Assessment and Reporting of Tsunami System is a good example of this. 
Now that we have an understanding of tsunamis, let us look at a particular example. On Boxing Day 2004, a colossal fault rupture along the Sunda Trench in the Indian Ocean near Sumatra unleashed one of the most powerful earthquakes ever recorded, which in turn generated an immense tsunami that spread to the east and west. As there was no warning system in place yet, people in the surrounding areas were taken largely by surprise. Waves up to 35 metres high smashed the coasts of countries like Indonesia, Thailand, Malaysia, Sri Lanka and India, and later reached as far as Eastern Africa. They surged several kilometres inland, destroying everything in their path, stripping away buildings and vegetation, and causing the deaths of an estimated 230,000 people. This event was one of the worst natural disasters in human history. Hopefully this video has been useful in giving an insight into tsunamis. We will continue to explore the natural disasters that our Earth can unleash in future episodes. But for now, stay curious, and I'll see you next time.